Welcome to our series at the Winter Gardens in Blackpool, looking at all the hidden secrets and exploring its rich history inside the building. In this video, we are back inside the main Winter Gardens building to show you the bits we couldn't access last time, taking you deeper into the hidden secrets and showing you some never before seen photographs of inaccessible areas. There's a lot to show you, so let's get straight into it. So we're back in the floral hall, so that's just down here, coming towards us. And there you've got the Horseshoe Pavilion, or the other side of it, which we didn't see. And also this area here is the backstage area of the Pavilion Theatre, which is just through there. So all this would have been the fly room here, coming down. But like I said in the last video, this is now a cafe. So as you come in the Victoria or the Coronation Street entrance, you've got this little stained glass building or a vestibule, as I'll call it. Today it houses a disabled lift into the floral hall. You can see some of the old pillars on there with the patterns on. But this, I believe, is the wall here, the front of the grand vestibule. Now, if you watched my first video that we did on the Winter Gardens, we found the original frontage of this building hidden in the roof space up there behind a wall. And you could see the windows inside it. But this is where it follows through, down through the building. But you can see the old window frames here, where they've, they've blocked them in now. But you can see the curvature at the top, where they've just built a roof here. So now you've got the Spanish hall above us here. But that wouldn't have been there. This was all an atrium, all the way out here. And it was known as the Palm House. And it had giant palms and trees and the original building front of Winter Gardens was visible. I'm going to put a picture of that in now, just so you can see what this hall used to look like. If you remember in our first video, we found this facade hidden behind a false wall. I speculated that this was the original frontage to the Winter Gardens, known as the Grand Vestibule. Well, this was correct. And I'm now going to show you some rare pictures of that building, just before it was covered over by the Spanish Hall. This was known as the Palm House and Fenery. The large glass canopy was constructed in front of the Grand Vestibule as a new entrance into the complex, sometime early in the 1900s. It was filled with lush palm trees and incorporated the old entrance inside. In the 1930s, this was split into two levels. The first level is what you see today as the Victoria Street foyer, and the second level contained the Spanish Hall, this is when the Grand Vestibule facade would have been covered over and hidden behind the walls. We uncover more of this forgotten building throughout this video. And then today, this is what it looks like now. So again, that's the Coronation Street, Victoria Street entrance. We've got another lounge just over here. Some stairs up into that side and then up to the floral hall that way. And this is the room that I was just showing you with the stained glass windows in. But originally this was all open. But you've got the Spanish Hall up there now. Like I said, that was put in in the 1930s as a second level. But you would have come in from this street here and walked straight into a giant dome here, right up to the glass ceiling, which is now in the Spanish room. You can kind of see some of the original patterns that used to be in the uh, palm, palm Hall or Palm Room, whatever they called it. Some of the original arches on the wall now it's plaster up there they've painted it now but i'm presuming these were the original columns as well all nicely painted now it would have ran all the way up to the ceiling and this is uh, the dirham lounge which is just to the left of the victoria street entrance as you come in so again a nice old room this how old would you say this was, David? I'm not quite sure on this one. Probably dates back to when the palm house was here, maybe. It more than likely did, yeah. Uh, I know they found the chandelier down in the catacombs in a box and decided to use it in here, which is rather nice. Oh, fantastic. Rather so just da being dusty down there. David just said they found that in a box in the basement. <laughs> yeah, this is now the edge of the Winter Gardens complex um, at the end of Coronation Street here. Yeah. And then again, that's the corner entrance. This would have probably been some kind of a side room or a bar area or some kind, or a cigar room knowing back then. Probably. 
Uh, lovely deco. It looks Edwardian, maybe Victorian. Not quite Art Deco, definitely not. And apparently, those of you from Blackpool will remember this as we think it was called Apple Jacks. We're not sure, like a bar, nightclub type of thing. We used to access it from the uh, Coronation Street entrance there. So this is the Mazai Cafe, which we didn't get in last time, but it's rumoured that this back wall here is the original wall of Bank Hay House, the original house that stood on this site before Winter Gardens was built. And the Grand Vestibule is just through there. We'll go have a look at that in a second. That was the one that was built on the outside of it. But this is thought to be the shape of the original Bank Hay House. Now, they believe that the only wall that exists from Bank Hay is this one here, behind the plaster work, and down to the cellars down there. Now, this room here is the original building that was known as the Grand Vestibule. So you used to enter Winter Gardens through this front entrance here, where the bar is now, and come into Winter Gardens this way. This would have been some kind of a big lounge, and I think there was another level above it, which is now like I say, the back of the Spanish... In fact, no, it's the Baronial Hall up there. That's the Baronial Hall. So you've got the Baronial Hall above us in the old Grand Vestibule. At the time I was in there, I didn't know that, but now I do. But you can see the old Victorian pillars in the middle of the room here, just to make it more spacious. And you can see those window designs there on the back wall, which were replicated up there, hidden in the, behind the plasterwork. But this is one of the original rooms anyway, for, or one of the oldest rooms in the building. Not the oldest, but one of the oldest. Now we've just headed up towards what was the Spanish Hall again, or what is the Spanish Hall, just up here. Now I've got a little story to tell you about this carpet. Now it's not this exact carpet, but it's one that used to be here. But apparently this whole corridor here and the stairs was known as the spit carpet. The spit carpet was a clever market employ by promoter Bill Holland to bring in the working classes and pay the entrance fee into the complex. It was advertised as a 100 guinea carpet that you were welcome to come and spit on as a snub to the high society. People did come in their masses, but none, thankfully, are said to have spat on the carpet as they actually appreciated its quality. If you remember last time we were here, we did the, the Spanish Hall here. Again, I'm just going to have one more look because I'm so impressed with this room. It's beautiful. So again, we're in the Spanish Hall. But in here is what is known now as the Windsor Bar. We didn't see this room last time. But you can get up the staircase here from the Galleon Bar downstairs. And again, you've got the roof there straight out to the daylight. But I'm not sure when this was built. It's hard to tell because there's so many periods for this building. You can just see some of the wiring there behind the little uh, Spanish village where it lights up. You can see some of the plaster work there where they've uh, plastered it on the mesh and the steel frame behind it. You never see this sort of thing. And then hundreds, well over a hundred years of dust down there, as you'd expect inside these little quirky houses. And then you've got this third room here, which is known as the Renaissance room. And we didn't see this last time either. But this is actually, it's hard to describe unless you know the top level, but you've got the Spanish hall at the front. Then you've got the baronial hall, which we saw in the first video, which is there. And then this room, just at the side here. This looks again Victorian. But then you've got things like this at the top that look very Art Deco. So I'll pop it down below when this was built because I'm not 100% sure while I'm here. This room is known as the Harold Suite, named after Harold Grimes and not Harold Wilson, as people believe. It is said that during World War II, this was used by Winston Churchill to chair a Cobra-style meeting However, during the meeting, the Winter Gardens fire officer came in and removed the cigar from Winston Churchill's mouth. Fire officers were deemed a superior authority back in those times, and their rules were upheld in the strictest of terms. 
opening a cigar. I wonder if it was Keith Lard. <laughs> Smoke kills in seconds, fire kills in minutes. So we've headed round to St John's Square to take a closer look at this carriage entrance here, which I have mentioned in my Empress Ballroom video. So if you haven't seen that, check the video out. But we're going to just take a look through the window here. Unfortunately, the premises is closed today, so I can't get you inside. But I'm going to poke you through the window and tell you a little story about something that was recently uncovered inside there. Now this is looking in the old carriage entrance. Today it is a cafe. But if you just look on the walls, to the right there and to the left, you can see some tiled panels on the wall. Now they are currently known as the Neatby panels. Again, made by Dalton of Royal Dalton fame. But they were buried behind fake walls that were put up inside this room many years ago. They were only uncovered recently during restoration works where they found some of the original panels still intact behind the walls and they are on display today in this cafe here which is nice to see but there were a lot more than what is in there currently because the entrance or the tunnel used to stretch further inwards that's been demolished years ago so they have been lost forever unfortunately but we do still have a number of them on display in there which is great to see I'm now going to show you some photographs sent to me by a former employee. They show many areas inaccessible or out of bounds to most people. The first two pictures show the roof space above the auditorium in the Opera House. You can see the large ventilation pipe suspended above the roof. These pictures appear to show the fly room above the now blocked off pavilion theatre. This would be above the Empress Grill today. The remains of the grand vestibule building that we found in the wall, this time taken from the basement levels of the building. Again, you can see the iconic window design we saw above. This photo is taken behind the famous Winter Garden sign at the Victoria Street entrance. It's in the void between the sign and the Spanish Hall. And finally, this shows an abandoned office or staff area, believed to be on the roof of the complex. This has been untouched for many years and is now sealed off completely. We will be back at the Winter Gardens very soon for more historic explores. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one. <laughs>